so this is Smite's most and least skilled guts. You better video on this. I surveyed hundreds of my Which audience. I actually put up a title for Ul being the hardest god in Smite, and all the comments were saying Ul is not the hardest god in Smite. He's easy. And I went through and responded to everybody that said that and said, What's your in game name? I'd love to watch your last Ul game. And none of them gave me their in game names. Members to find the answer to one simple question Which are the highest and lowest skilled gods in Smite? I asked everyone who took part to rate every Smite god from 1 to 5 based on how hard or easy they are. Yeah, that's a play, lot of gods to rate. Completely brain dead and 5 being galaxy brain. I then averaged out all the responses into a single number for each god. Let's take a look at that data. So, first up, class averages. Here's the results Guardians came out on top with an average score of 2.76 out of 5, very closely followed by. Okay, this already tells me that whoever he's pulling is fucking stupid. Guardians being more skilled is crazy stupid. And then Warriors are the second. Oh, no, the Warriors, they have Warriors are the lowest. So they, at least they got part. This is crazy, though. What the fuck, dude? All right, hold on. We gotta, we gotta get into this. Then a decent drop off to mages at 2.54, followed by hunters at 2.38, and finally warriors as the least skilled class overall at 2.35, just behind hunters. Moving on, let's talk about some warriors do take no skill, bro. 100%. Fared over the years in terms of skill cap. So the most yeah, instantly yeah. noticeable takeaway from this data is that season six completely knocked out of the park in terms of skill testing god releases. With a score of 3.35, they're far enough. All right, this is kind of troll because Persephone is not a skill issue. It's a reading issue. It's a comprehension issue. Yorm, Horus, and Set are super free. All the run is just an alt bot. Merlin and Yemoja, I would say, are hard. So, you know, I, I don't know about the others. I don't remember the Clearly other releases, the but Clearing this the second is place, season eight kind of by troll. More than 0.5 points. These results were dragged up quite a bit by Yamoja and Set, who yeah. scored extremely high. But honestly, Set the entire scored high? Okay, so whoever voted is stupid Oscar as fuck. Season six outside of Yormanganda scored really highly here. The lowest skill roster overall came out to be closed beta, which makes sense since this includes the original 17. Yeah, there's the 17 gods. We'll That's going to pull it down no matter what. Simple than late releases. Year 10 actually came quite close here though with 2.31 only 0.03 points behind close beta all right moving on to single behind close beta okay okay i mean bake release mommin more release marty surter Karan are all pretty easy okay 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 actually i agree with that all right, moving on to single god data though. They're First all pretty up, fucking let's easy. Let's take a look at the highest and lowest skill gods from each class. Kicking it off with assassins, the most skilled assassin overall was set with an impressive score of 4.13 out of 5. Bro, who voted on this? What? Okay, just in general, this is just wrong. Like, this is just blatantly wrong. If I post up 100 players on Sir Cat and I post up 100 players on set, the set games will always have higher KDAs and have more fucking wins. Every, like the percentage will be dramatically higher. So whoever voted set is just, they either don't play jungle or they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Cause there's literally no world where, I mean, dude, that's, that's just, like even Lancelot, bro. Like Sir Kat and Lancelot are immensely harder, take way more skill than set. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. The least skilled assassin is probably no surprise to anyone, and that's Arachne with a pitiful yeah, score. Yeah, I agree with that. For Guardians, but there's no the world set as the highest. That's just Yemoja, potato, I believe. Again, is probably no surprise to anyone who's looked at her win rates across I, the ranks. I agree with she that. She came in at a whopping 4.69 out of 5, which is pretty crazy given this Set stage. is not hard. Set is a W key god. You don't even think. You hold left click, and while you're left clicking somebody, you, without even looking, you're just spamming two. And then when you want to burst them, you press one. That's it. There's no other thought process. It, that's it. That's literally it. There's your, you either can't read, you either don't read, or you don't listen if you can't do that. Because that's all you have to do is averaged out from hundreds of responses she also had by far the most total five out of five ratings the least skilled guardian is of course back at Kujira at 1.41 which might have a tiny bit of recency bias thrown in there but even nah, without that, i'd say Guardians that's up there he's the bad now though overall but back at he was just too easy to play on launch or on release brain dead easy he is to play next up hunters ula took the cake for the most skilled you guys want to see some shit look at this it's an old game, obviously. It's really not hard to play an ADC with three spacing tools on low cooldowns. Ul is not the hardest god. 
Am I the only one that thinks Ool is actually easy to play? Bro, what rank are you fucking potato asses? There's more? Oh, no, that's all I responded to. There's more though. <sighs> at least they got that right. I, I give them, you know, at least, at least we, we got that right in this video Ports so far. Overall with a score of 3.82 out of five, which was so There's no world where Haim is harder. Haim is worse. That's the difference. Haim is a worse god. Haim's kit is limited as to what it could do because the alt fucking sucks. The two is probably the best ability outside of the three, but for damage abilities, the two and the one suck for damage. His whole kit and like the way they as they set it up just sucks. Surprisingly high on Where Ul's entire kit is mechanical skill. The entire kit is mechanics. You have to literally aim, pinpoint aim most shit. It is what it is. I agree with Duel. Heavily agree with Duel. The least skilled hunter was Izanami with a score of 1.49, which does make sense given yeah. how the gods. Pretty clear. That's pretty much what you tell new players to play, so they can just get pressure. Where the most skilled is probably no surprise, and that's the Morrigan with an average score of 4.49 out of five. Of course, this. Okay, I don't agree with this. Um, I get where it's coming from, and I get the argument. But I don't agree with this. The argument is, well, if you play Morrigan, you have to know every god in the game. That is not the fuck how that works. So Morrigan's best swaps, especially into the late game, are you engage with your regular kit. You try to one-shot somebody and you swap it to a tank. So you need to know how to play Warriors and Guardians. They don't have it like this. They do like Warriors and Guardians are easy to play. There's very little skill on most of them. So you should always have a free god to swap into that is hyper tanky. So I don't agree with this almost entirely from her ultimate requiring you to know how to play most if not all See, of the gods in the game to i don't agree with that full potential the lowest skilled mage overall came out to be kukul khan at 1.70 which okay. i personally think is too low for this guy and there are quite a few other I, mages. I actually this is hold on let me see that is kind of low all right let me do a quick scan real quick like skill wise i don't or low low skill wise who else is is anyone else just too easy like okay I would have said Nuwa, bro. I would have said Nuwa's the easiest. I don't think Nuwa takes any true skill to be useful. I guess to be played perfectly, Nuwa takes more skill. But to be useful, Kukulki can do the bare minimum. Uh, like, in by you have to hit an alt, which is kind of hard. Where Nuwa can literally just alt and hit everybody. I'd say Nuwa is probably the, the least skilled. I don't know. Just, I will put lower you can be relevant every fight by pressing one button, no matter what. That this guy is super easy to play. He and is finally, easy to play. Kuku is easy to play. The overall class in terms of skill, the Warriors. The most skilled of them was rated to be Tia at 2.98. An interesting result, not because of the god itself, but because of how much lower this is than all the other classes' offerings for most skilled. He sits almost a full one point below Ula. Because Warriors are easy. Lower than Yamoja. The least skilled... Oh, no, Am I, is it wild is tier the most skilled no i it, i actually agree with that i i mean it, we're, we're three is even high probably i would put tier at like a two and then all the other gods are like ones i'm a hard to play Warrior overall oh, came great. out to be the mana at 1.49, which is really not surprising in the least. Not only is he completely brain dead in his game plan of left click W, but he's also been terrorizing the meta very recently on his fresh. Yeah, the mana, as, as long as his ult's good, is, right, is the easiest. The you've been no skill, for, literally the zero skills. And least skilled gods in Smite, according to this data. Kicking things off with the top 10 least skilled, here's the list. A lot of these make complete sense to me, especially the bottom four, which sit noticeably lower than the rest. Okay. I don't agree with this as uh, I would have said Wukong is one of the harder warriors because you're you're three like that alone is one of the harder warrior abilities to use correctly and actually hit um I would not put Wukong here personally I think they're going off the one being super easy to hit and like the alt keeping you alive but that's every warrior has that but usually warriors have more than one easy to hit ability these are the easiest the least skilled at below 1.5 out of 5. Neath rounds out the top 10 least Wukong skilled. Wukong is brain dead? Bro, Achilles is brain dead. Ama is brain dead. Bologna is brain dead. I, I, all of these are brain dead. But at least Wukong has a actual ability that has a skill gap in landing. No one else, like you could argue Mulan's 3 maybe, but no one else has a hard to hit ability at all. And Nike, probably the easiest out of everybody. It's why Nike has had the highest win rate for fucking years. Which is definitely an expected result. She's probably the first thing that comes to mind when someone says noob god, but does have some skill requirement in using the ultimate effect. Neath is hyper questionable, dude.
I don't think Neath being on here makes any sense. Your ult's gonna get eaten by tanks all the time out, outside of early game, like outside of your, you know, your lane to lane ganks. Once you're grouping, tanks are eating every Neath ult. So I'm not, uh, like most Neath players are, get players. railed because the God is harder to play than they think. With his kit being extremely simple to use, but does have that one skill. No, Neath is not the easiest ADC to play. I'm sorry, not at all. You're talking about like, oh, it's easy to hit Neath one and two. That is not how you play Neath. Like that is that does not get you a win. That doesn't make you do anything. And in team fights, you're probably just hitting the one on a tank, and it's hitting for ten. So I'm not I'm not sold That's on Neath either, bro. That's questionable. Here as fuck. Is sensible too. He's probably the safest god in the entire game, and it's very hard to put. I don't know about Wukong being the safest god of the entire game. Even if he makes constant mistakes, his abilities are extremely easy to hit, and the only semblance of skill required is choosing the right farm on his three. Chuck is similar, just a very basic kit with nothing too much to think about other than hitting your buttons. Nuwa makes sense as well, but honestly, as a bro, Wukong is not because Wukong is building damage to be played in the solo lane. He's the only warrior that has to build damage to be relevant in the lane. If he goes full tech Wukong, he does nothing. So that makes him killable. Wukong is probably the easiest warrior to gank because of the required build. I know that because I'm a jungler. If I see a Wukong, I'm down to gank Wukong. Because he's going to go blue stun, and he's probably going to go with damage item first. So he can clear the fucking wave. And then he's going to go mainly damage and not tank so he can kill backline a little bit lower than i would have expected she is extremely easy don't get me wrong but her lack of true mobility does require you to position yourself a little more carefully than some other mages but i guess the ult sort of solves that also you. like if you want to argue about neath neath is one of the easiest adcs to gank so how is he going to be easy to be played if you're just dying all the time i've talked about kakul khan already and i don't think he should be bottom five on this list given his lack of true there's no agreeing or disagreeing i'm informing you that Wukong is the easiest gank because he's going to be Bluestone and he's going to be Jotun's or he's going to be Bluestone Runeforge. I'm telling you as a jungler, he is an easy gank. I'm not asking you. I'm informing you that if you are a jungler, you will kill Wukong. You will go gank that lane. His ult does not keep him alive because you don't just magically ult when I blink CC you. Like, it makes no sense. I, you guys live in some magical world where, like, the people aren't playing against you. That's If we're just talking about base abilities... And we're not talking about how the games play. We're not talking about how lanes play. We're not talking about builds. Then we shouldn't even have in the conversation because those are all parts in deciding whether a god is easy or bad or, you know, good or bad or easy or hard. Ooh, yeah. it's real hard if everyone's, or real easy if everyone stands still and doesn't fucking move. Like, we, what the fuck are we talking about? And somewhat difficult skill shots compared to other mages, but he does make the bottom five on this list. Izanami makes complete sense given she basically plays herself for the entire early game. The mana is an obvious one as well. His base kit is extremely simple, and his ultimate is literally just press it and hold left click W for the win. Not much skill to that. Bake is another left click to win god, but has the extra factor of being extremely tanky, which makes him more forgiving. And finally, Arachne takes the overall lowest skill god spot, which is once again a hold left click W and win for free style god. You can play 10 games with someone coming and not die to a gank in what bracket bro i will i will you i will tell you i'm coming and i will gank you we can go play in the game right now we can set up a lobby i will type to you i'm coming to kill you i will fucking kill you if you're clearing your lane i will kill you i don't know i don't know what world you think you're not getting ganked on wukong you and i just watched you play achilles and get ganked and and literally get farmed so i know that's bullshit you were just the achilles in the elo hell game you got fucking railed you had three items when everyone else had five items. And I watched you get ganked. So what the fuck are you talking about? You're gonna eat ganks all fucking day. You, you got ganked when he walked over a ward. He walked over a ward and you still got ganked. Bro, you dying once doesn't matter. If you miss two waves because you have to back every time you get ganked, that's a win. Dying or living is not a not how a gank is decided, bro. That's so small brain. Every time he ganked you, you back to base and miss a full wave. I watched you be three levels down. I watched you have three items. You were down like 3,000 gold. Those are ganks. Those are successful ganks. If he puts his teammate ahead on a gank, he doesn't have to kill you. If you're backing a missing farm, you're taking an L. Interestingly, Bakasura didn't make the bottom 10 despite being very similar to these bottom four. He actually took the number 12 spot. But with that covered, let's move into the top 10 highest skilled gods in Smite according to this. What the fuck is this? Who the fuck? What the fuck? A Wheelix? Bro, you must have had some bronze bitches. You must have had must have had bliss voting on this, bro. What? What? A Wheelix? Highest skill god set? Highest skill gods? Fucking Maui? Cleo? At least Sir Kent's on there. Like that makes sense.
and the Tiamat I can I can I can follow with, but god damn, what the fuck? this data so cat comes in first just making the list at number 10 this does make sense given hitting her double this makes no sense hit. everyone sucks dick at circuit oh my the voting bro i do think she's a tad even now Terra. after i mean maybe this this was probably done before the Terra change but after the Terra change Terra is not hard to play because your laning phase is so much easier than it ever was. Yannis took the number 12 spot, but I think he should have been here in place of Sir Cat. Kleena is at number 9, which I... Who did he just say? He should have been here in place of Sir Cat. Given hitting her double madness is one of the hardest skill shots in the game, but I do think she's a tad overrated here. Yannis took the number 12 spot. What? I'm trying to figure out how you say her ability is the hardest to hit ability in the game. Double taunt of madness. And then follow that with she shouldn't be in one of the hardest skill guards. What the fuck? Oh, but I think he should have been here in place of Sir Cap. Kleena is at yeah, No, Jan is in here, bro. This is oil. Which I do agree with. Her lack of lockdown CC means placing her abilities correctly and or waiting for CC. Cleo is not hard to play at all. Completely disagree. Would have put her way lower. Team is really important. And of course, the wall mechanics are very hard to use to their full potential. And are something completely unique to her, which won't transfer over in terms of Keep in level. mind, this is not, this is an intersect video. This is not him rating them. This is him polling, I assume, his audience or maybe a Discord or something. And this is their ratings. Well, the gods he played. Maui hits the number eight spot, which I do agree with again. If anything, I think he should be a little higher here. He's a very. The only thing. Hard about Maui is his ult, and it's not hard. It's you to be really relevant on Maui, you need to be consistently hitting alts, and it's not hard to hit. I played like two Maui games in the past year, and I don't think I missed a single ult. orthodox kit with the ones needing to be set up beforehand, which requires forethought and good game sense to know when it'll be needed rather than just reacting to something happening and having it come out immediately. Using the two effectively is a thing of beauty when you can take your teammates that don't have jumps over walls to save them or engage on the enemy team. And of course, his ult is not only hard to hit in general, but you also have to think about the placement more so than usual to make use of the island to trap enemies after the fact. Glad to see Maui make the top 10, but I personally would have placed him even higher. Terra takes the number 7 spot, which I do think is a little overrated. She's definitely not harder than Maui in my opinion, but there are plenty of skill testing elements in her kit. And she has a very unorthodox ultimate that is hard to get value out of. But if you do, it's extremely powerful. Alright, I appreciate Intersect a lot, but he just... That was just blatantly wrong. Um... Terra's ult is probably the easiest ult to get value out of. It is a massive circle that hits your teammates and the enemy team. You pretty much always get value out of Terra ult. Uh, it's pretty hard to not get value out of it. You, you'd you have to miss. I, I get... I, I don't... Yeah. Tiamat comes in at number six, which makes complete sense. Being a stand switcher already puts a little extra burden on playing her since you need to know eight I'll agree with Tiamat. It's too many abilities for your average player to not God, fuck up and be shit at. Have more Just abilities. like Merlin. That, yeah, where the fuck is Merlin? Merlin should have been on here for sure as well. Janice, Merlin... Like, those are gods that just take too much brain power for your average human being to play. Many they have. Tiamat is not like this at all, as you can choose between three summons for her flying ult. She has her fair share of unique Even Yeah, even hell mechanics, now, like especially with the healing change? Buffs, the whole hard and scale People voting on this are trolling, bro. Style when in ground stance. If anything, Tiamat is a little underrated at number six and definitely demands a lot from her pilot to be used effectively. Breaking the top five... I love Intersect's graphics and like, so I definitely like the little things he does. High. Unlike There's... Tiamat, Awelix's abilities themselves are actually fairly simple. Her depth and skill comes from how you use them. The immunity frames on Feather Step, clever positioning to get knockups from the three... So that's min-maxing. That's not just like... Like, we haven't talked about min-maxing on anybody here, really. Because, <laughs> like, if we are min-maxing Sir Cat, it's definitely the hardest in the in probably the game next to Ool. Um, Pulling from very short. Awelix is easy. Awelix is very, very easy. You, you, don't, you don't even have to hit knockups on Awelix. Other people can do it for you. And then late game, you just pop your ult. Blink, auto, auto, two, auto, auto, they're dead. Pops in melee range with her ult, knowing when to stay mounted and when to jump from Suku and put it on cooldown. There's definitely a lot that goes into playing a Wheelix effectively. And while I do think she isn't quite as hard as Tiamat or Maui, she definitely deserves to be in the top 10. No, so she far. doesn't. She four, shouldn't be in the top Ula, 20. Which I was very surprised by. Don't get me wrong, Ula is fairly hard to play, but in my opinion, nowhere near top four hardest in the game. For my is Ula not the only god in the game that has true hard to hit skill shots for every ability? 
Like, am I trolling? Doesn't every god in the game have an easy to hit ability? My own list, he probably wouldn't even make the top 10 to be honest. That is insane. My, my guess is anyone who voted on a Wheelix and Ul have never actually played a Wheelix and Ul. And I, somebody left a comment on my, on my YouTube video for Ul from yesterday and they had a good point. And they were like, I guess it's some theory or something. And it's like the bell curve, I guess the bell curve theory. And it's like shit players think like, you know, we'll think Ul is hard. Average players will say Ul is easy. And then great players will say Ul is hard. And I, I mean, this kind of, sh I mean, I don't know. Be honest. That's what Show it seems like. It sounds changing on ability. That's what it sounds like from everybody out here talking about it. Has some of the highest APM plays of any god in the game. Well, and two and four are easy. To do consistently up. <laughs> but you just using them doesn't have any inherent value. The two and the four are only easy if you're using them correctly. So that just adds to it. If you're just spamming them, it's irrelevant. Ranges as well. But I really don't think all of that adds up to Ula being harder than the likes of Maui, Tia, Ma, or Ola. That's insane to me, bro. The survey and rated Ula highly, That's a Dunning Kruger effect. Okay, well, whatever the fuck it is, bro. The dude can't talk about it on Maybe YouTube and it makes sense. I'm missing here. The top three are definitely a cut above the rest here with Set starting it off. I always have problems putting why set is difficult into words, but I think anyone who's tried to play him just knows. No, okay. Let's let's have a quick little uh, week in school. All right. Set's abilities, okay? Your one, it hits hard, it slows, and it pushes the twos around. Your twos, little clay guys on the ground that get pushed by the one. Three, makes you take 15% less damage from all sources. It does damage in an AoE around you. And you're slow immune. Your ultimate makes you fast. When you do damage, you heal. You do extra. You, get, you do extra damage. You literally have two abilities that make you run at people. You have an ability that is irrelevant unless you are using one. You essentially have one ability on this god. You have to know how to use one ability. The other ones, you just fucking face slam your fucking keyboard. As long as they go up, you're good. Okay, that's it. And then if you, like, if we're actually how to play the god, like if you want the raw, this is how you play him. You press alt, you blink, you press three, you spam two while you're autoing, you're holding left click and you're spamming fucking two. And then when you want to burst, you press one. That's it. There is no thought. There is no, their HP is this, they're positioned here. That You run at people. You just run at people. Set's early game is not rough. You are completely wrong. That is completely incorrect. Set is good throughout the whole game. You have a flat 15% reduction. This is like, I think this is the only god in the game with a flat reduction at all levels. It's the same. You just rank one point in this fucking ability and you take 15% less damage. Period. Zero. End of story. You're trolling if you think set is hard. You are blatantly outing yourself for being bad at the game if you think set is hard. Careful and selective with when you go all in using the ult. And of course, angling stewards to hit as many people as possible is hard to do. But I really do have a hard time explaining why Set is so skill testing. But it I do agree not. that he should be here as someone who's trying to. It is to learn brain comprehension testing. Nobody wants to read all this, bro. No one wants to read fucking mini paragraph, mini paragraph, big paragraph, big paragraph. Then they have to read another paragraph of the passive. Then they have to sync them all up. It's because people don't watch guides. It's because your average fucking player thinks they're big brained and great at everything. And they don't just go learn. If you watch a five fucking minute video on every God before you play it, you will be way fucking better and you won't have to read. If you don't do that, I already know you're probably shit at every game you play. On him in the past and given up pretty quickly. At number two, we have Morrigan, who is, of course, purely here because of her ultimate, that in theory at least requires you to master every god in the game to use to its fullest potential, making her skill ceiling damn near infinite. Of course, in reality, you probably just need one or two good transforms that you know to a good enough level on your team or the enemy team to make good use of this ability, but there's always that potential of maximizing this and always having the perfect. Bro, what's even more troll is fucking it, uh. Jing Wei is one of the easiest to play gods of the game. You talked about not being, not dying. Nothing kills Jing Wei. The only thing that even semi makes Jing Wei rough to play is in a wheel exalt. Even then, you don't kill Jing Wei. 
transform for the situation that makes her theoretically so the fact that she's not wasn't on the lowest is crazy if her skill floor is actually not the highest in the game by any means and finally the number one most skilled god in the entire game and probably no surprise to anyone is yamoja taking the top spot with i'm fine with yamoja being like a top one two or three of course omi management is one of the big things that separates a new yamoja from a master but there's also plenty of things with her abilities themselves i actually disagree with that i think most people suck at yamoja because they can't physically hit the one and they don't ult uh, to lock people in. They aren't capable of ulting to lock people in because it requires hard. positioning yeah. and timing. One has weird, unique targeters and timing on both forms that take a while. Alpha, to get I said the same properly. thing. Using her three to save allies or trap enemies is something that's really hard to get a handle on. And of course, using her ultimate in the jungle to get true cages using terrain walls and or her three to completely trap enemies is extremely skill testing. You'll immediately notice the difference between even an average Yamoja and a master of the character. And I think that really shows in this ranking. 100% deserved. But that's all I've got for this video. Video. what are your personal thoughts do you agree with them that's it yeah i'm not i uh, i shout out intersect by the way on youtube i n t e r s three c t um he does a lot of videos like that so i'm doing a little hell bitch um yeah i don't agree with like most of that I, I don't know who he pulled but whoever he pulled there's a lot of really low level players in there that's that's crazy um tomorrow i'll do a like a version of that for my like my own version of that with a tier list i'll do like you know hardest to play easiest to play and then average i guess or you know mid-tier that is mind-blowing